Hi folks and welcome to the first in a short series of video presentations on Salient Processes Salesforce Toolkit. In these presentations we're going to give you an overview and then dive a little bit deeper into the toolkit that allows us to interact with Salesforce. So the uh, first thing we want to consider is what is Salesforce? So uh, I'm, I'm not uh, not going to assume you're, you're completely familiar with this. So let's start at the beginning. Salesforce is a customer relationship management system. It's hosted by Salesforce and it lives on the cloud. That means within your enterprise, you don't act to actually have to install anything locally in your environment. It's all managed, governed, maintained, stored, backed up, secured by Salesforce themselves. So think of it loosely like a database in the cloud. So what does this database hold? It holds your customer management information, specifically things like the uh, customers you're working with, the accounts, your billing records, your leads, your contacts, and a variety of other customer management pieces of data. Now, Salesforce, of course, is, is a uh, cloud-hosted data storage environment but it also provides first-class user interaction capabilities. So what that means is we've got browser-based interaction provided by Salesforce that provides first-class management of the records. So you don't have to write any applications in order to interact with Salesforce. It's just there for you. You go and use it. So I'm going to imagine that you have Salesforce deployed in your environment and you're also investigating BPM, or you also have BPM, and specifically IBM's BPM. So let's now think about what might be the interactions between IBM BPM and a Salesforce environment on the cloud. Specifically, there are three areas that we have identified and supported in our initial offering of the Salesforce toolkit. The first one we're calling the Salesforce BPM services. We're going to go into these in each one in detail. Then we've got a set of coach views, and then we've got the concept of event notification. So let's start breaking these down. The first thing is that uh, within your BPM processes, you can imagine uh, creating services. And in those services, you might, for example, uh, want to create a new record on Salesforce or retrieve an existing record or update a record or search for existing records or delete records. These are the so-called CRUD operations, create, retrieve, update and delete. Now in the Salesforce world, the unit of storage in Salesforce is called an object and an object is composed of a collection of records. So uh, think of, for example, an object that might be your accounts object. And within the accounts object are the myriad of different records corresponding to each individual account. So within the, uh, the Salesforce world, that's how data is internally represented. From within the Salesforce toolkit for BPM, we provide you some black box, out-of-the-box services, which you can introduce into your own BPM processes, which are very well-designed, well-architected, and elegant interfaces, where you can call those services, and those services will own the interaction with Salesforce on the Internet. So you can start interacting with the records in your Salesforce environment without you having to do any of the heavy lifting of writing network communications protocols or worrying about security or all of the other things. We've done that for you and we've provided you these new Legos blocks that you can introduce into your BPM solution. The next thing we want to talk about are coach views. Now the notion behind a coach view is that it, 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 it is itself a user interface building block. So if you've been building coaches within the BPM environment, uh, IBM has provided a variety of different coach views for things like text fields and buttons and lists and tables and all sorts of other good things. The Salesforce toolkit augments the set of coach views which already exist in your BPM environment with two new coach views. One we call the Salesforce list and one we call the Salesforce record. 
Now the Salesforce list presents a list of different records or the distinct records within a given Salesforce object. So when we configure the Salesforce list, we can elect to provide a, an expression which will select which records within a Salesforce object are going to be presented to us through our user interface. So we can see a summary or details of uh, an individual record within a list. Now when we select a record within the list, we can then be uh, shown the details of that individual record. Because remember, a record is composed of individual fields and uh, the Salesforce record coach view shows us the individual fields within the selected record. So two related concepts. One is the list. The list shows us all the records within an object and one is the record coach view, and another is the record coach view which allows us to drill down into a specific record within the uh, the list and we'll find that the Salesforce record coach view allows us to go in change edit delete and otherwise manipulate individual records within the Salesforce object and uh, the next thing, or last thing I want to talk about in this overview is the notion of event notification from Salesforce. We can imagine Salesforce and BPM existing separately and distinctly from each other. However, we might want BPM to be notified when interesting things happen within the Salesforce environment. For example, if we want a, to be notified in BPM when an existing record or, 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 or an existing record is modified or a new record is created or another record is deleted, we would want that to be pushed or otherwise notified down to BPM. And we provide two parallel technologies within the Salesforce toolkit to allow exactly that to happen. One technology is Salesforce Push, and in that story, we configure Salesforce to be cognizant of the existence of BPM, and then when Salesforce detects a change in the objects that we're interested in, Salesforce calls out to BPM and tells BPM that something interesting has happened and BPM can react to it. That may be the start of a new process or the unblocking of an existing process. Lots of capabilities there. However, that requires some uh, architectural story on your part. Specifically, there must be a network path from Salesforce to BPM, and you might not always want to expose your BPM system that way. So an alternate story, exactly the same functionality, just a different implementation, is the capability of BPM to transparently poll Salesforce and ask it what has changed since the last time we polled. So this pool mechanism allows BPM, without exposing itself in any way to any form of network communication inbound, can then uh, communicate with Salesforce and literally ask Salesforce for the list of things that have changed since the last visit. Okay, so we touched on three major categories here. We spoke about uh, BPM's ability to make service API calls to Salesforce. We spoke about briefly the user interfaces for coach views that we've provided for the Salesforce story. And the last thing we spoke about here was the notion of server push, where server push is the ability for events in, B in Salesforce to be pushed down to the BPM environment for action. In subsequent videos, we're going to drill down into each of these in a lot more detail, show some demonstrations, show some examples, but this was uh, an overview of the primary capabilities of Salient Processes Salesforce Toolkit. Thanks now and talk to you all soon.